To explore one zoom, you should think of the tree as being like a map. To zoom in on an area of interest around the mouse pointer, you simply scroll up. To zoom out, you scroll down. To move around, you press and hold the left button of the mouse and move the mouse. At the top of the screen, there are a number of icons, each of which has a function. For example, to take you to the main website of OneZoom, or to open a further set of options for searching the tree for areas of interest. I'm now going to type in bat and press enter, and that's taken us to the bats within the tree. But that's not the only mention of the word bat, so if I press next hit again, that now has taken me to the wombats. You can choose whether to search within the Latin names, common names and conservation status of species by ticking and unticking these boxes here. For example, I'm now going to clear this search and type in endangered. That's now taken me to a part of the tree where there's a high concentration of endangered species. We can zoom in on any one of the leaves to see the names of the species linked to Wikipedia and also confirmation of their conservation status. There are similar details to be found on the interior parts of the tree if you zoom in on them. This tick box here next to flight animation enables you to go to the next hit of the tree not immediately but with an automatic animation through the tree which you can stop at any time by simply proceeding to browse a tree in a normal way and the flight animation will stop. These lines that show the places of the tree where the search hits are can be turned on and off with the markings tick box and the end there. I'm now going to close out of the search options bar and open the next icon which is the growth animation. This is now showing a scaled time animation of the tree growing that part of it which is currently in view. You can still browse the tree in the usual way while it's growing and you can see the date down here. You can pause the animation and restart it as well as go straight to the end using these buttons. The view options bar opens up a number of settings for the way the tree looks. It's still the same data but you can view it with three different structures. The spiral structure, this natural structure which shows the balance of the tree and also this third option here. You can change the colours from the current settings, the default which ranges from green indicating species that are under the least concern category of extinction risk to bright red for those that are critically endangered. There's also a plain colouring setting and colours that indicate the period of geological history where that part of the tree was diversifying. For example here the red is the Cretaceous period and the purple is post-Cretaceous. You can turn off these white labels if you don't like them by switching signposts on and off. You can also choose between Latin names and common names as being the primary labelling system although if you zoom in far enough you will always see both the Latin names and the common names. This only switches which of the two you wish to be more prominent. Finally, this reset view enables you to go back to the original view of the tree. You can also open this tutorial by pressing the question mark button and there are a number of further options in this more options bar including increasing and decreasing the detail, showing the polytomies which are uncertainties in the structure of the tree, they're indicated with these circles here or with a complete break in the tree and finally you can see how many times you've zoomed into the tree in the current view. I hope you enjoy exploring the tree of life using one zoom. Thank you.